prosecuted. So what is behind that? Just a couple of slides of interpreting this, what, what that actually means. Apart from this political prosecution of animals, that is a sign in society. There's something that is happening in society as well. Um, basically what we do, we move away from investigating crime to investigating danger in society. That came up with this terrorist um, threat and they maybe use it in order to be able to do that. And what does it mean? It means instead of prosecuting a specific criminal uh, crime where there is concrete evidence, you just um, find something that somebody completely legally does, but it, it is odd in a, in, in compared to normal behavior, and so there, there is the danger. Basically, they gather data, and then they look at the data, and those odd features in it, they sort of look in more detail, because being odd is being dangerous. And on the basis of this, they don't prosecute on the basis of guilt, but on the basis of an expected danger that comes from this oddness. Um, and by doing this, they extend <coughs> their investigation from, uh, and also the, the court um, prosecution, from the immediate crime scene or crime um, criminal activity far in front to where, um, to the, in the realm of your individual um, basic rights and um, investigate your private life. Um, uh, Richard Schmidt is um, head of the um, Germans, the Stuttgart State Prosecution, and he said in 1950, and he did apply that to um, the Soviet Union and the, the communist system, and he literally said the primary characteristic of a dictatorship consists of extending police investigations and prosecution far into the area which is protected by individual rights in free countries. And this is exactly what we are moving towards by moving away from crime investigation to danger investigation, where we just investigate the private life of lots of people and try to find um, odd things and thereby infringing in their individual rights. Basically, the, 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 the phrase they use is extended danger investigation. In Austria, in the Secret Service, there is an FBI agent, apparently everywhere in the world, there's an FBI agent from, from the USA, and, and they have explained to a person who then gave that information to me, that since 9-11, what they do is extended danger investigation. And this is exactly that they gather data from wherever they can, and how much ever they can, and then they try to pinpoint the exceptionally odd data, and then they put a focus on this odd data, and blow it up, and investigate even more, and get more and more data. And what happens there is this runaway effect of having to have more and more data, because if you, <coughs> if you don't find concrete evidence, but just this oddness, then for you, you with this criminal um, mind, you say this is an oddness, but it doesn't prove criminal. Then we need more data to see the criminal activity. So you need ever more data, ever more detail. And what then also happens is this psychological effect that, um, um, that if you explain this odd behavior, it sounds to everybody very strange that you seem to need to explain that for so long and then you become ever more sus suspect. And also, if you prove, you can't disprove this danger um, expectation because you can't say every minute of the day I have been doing this and there because there might be a minute where you were on the toilet where somebody didn't watch you and you might have been criminal then. So you cannot disprove that in principle. And that is a big problem because if they say you committed that crime on that day, then I might have been on that day somebody, somewhere else, so I can disprove it. But if they say you're just a danger, you cannot disprove it. And I am, I am basically suspect of being a danger for national security in Austria. And how can I ever disprove that? And the more I show that I act legally by getting lots of witnesses and lots of facts, then they say this only proves that I'm a particularly dangerous criminal because I hide my criminal activity behind all this legal outer face. And that makes it ever more impossible. And that, um, that is, I think, the basis on which the police is influencing the judges, that they actually decided all these things, because the judges are actually un, um, supposed to be, maybe they are bright, I don't know, but they're supposed to be not influenced. But um, by police going to them and then telling them all this oddness and this encrypting emails and so on, they apparently were um, moved towards um, believing this uh, and, and sanctioning any measure against us and against me. 
What I also see there is a move, what um, some German um, lawyers call um, a move from normal law, criminal law, uh, to, to enemy law. Um, basically, the idea is that there are enemies of the state, or enemies of society, or enemies of a law system, and those can't be treated as normal citizens. And in those definitions, these definitions are taken from their papers, and there are some people who support this view, we should have enemy law and normal law. And they say enemy, enemy is somebody who shows through their opinion or by being part of a corresponding organization that they have removed themselves far from law and order. And this is surely what the police considers me and the animal movement to be. We are opposing, opposing, confrontational tactic, opposing the political leadership of whoever. And by doing that, we sort of, in their minds, put ourselves outside of society and becoming enemy. Also, the organization, the phrase is already there. This, is, this puts us as a criminal organization. The organization has the aim of attacking society and thereby putting themselves outside of it, in their mind. Because actually we are fully inside of it, because we're constantly using a law to, prosecute, to try to prosecute animal abuse and so forth. Enemy, it says, there is somebody who disrupts state and society by their way, very way of living. That moves also towards um, veganism. And, uh, indeed, there is, a, there is a case where there was a suspect, and, in, and the police then wrote, because in that, that, that debate, he said he's actually not vegan and doesn't defend veganism, he's not a suspect anymore. So being vegan is a very important part of uh, being suspect. This is one of these odd features. <coughs> and indeed, this is the, the way of living must be different and uh, disrupt society. And who is an enemy who is not is then, uh, obviously a political question. And the normal law should only apply, apply and, and human rights should only apply to normal citizens who basically made a mistake by um, nicking some money. But the enemy of society, this is the one that needs to be uh, prosecuted. OK, summary, last thing. Um, basically, what we see um, is that there is a very strong police investigation and court procedures that is ever more escalating against animal activities and groups in Austria. And it's very much politically motivated. It is part of a wider move in society towards permanent surveillance and suppression suppression of dissidents and the suppression of dissident thinking of this outside of the society of this oddness and um, <coughs> the animal movement became um, the first target at least in Austria because it is effective in changing society it actually did manage to do some changes and force economy to become more animal friendly and it is perceived therefore as a threat to the economy and it irritates powerful interest groups and individuals, especially the interior minister who likes to hunt, and then if people are standing in his way, he wants to pay them back. Um, and then the problem is that there is this move since the terrorist threat towards danger investigation instead of crime investigation. It has become much easier psychologically to influence judges to see a, a need to act where there actually is none. Um, okay. That was for my presentation. Thank you. And maybe you want to comment or question. Mm -hmm. Since, since when was this uh, segment of the law? Uh, Sorry? Longer? When was this law passed, or the segment? This passed. Um, it was actually passed after 9-11. Um, it was in 2002 mm -hmm. that 278A was made. But it had a pre pre precursor <coughs> from 1993. But it was formulated differently. It has been extended to what it is now in 2002. And was it debated in the Austrian public? In the public it wasn't, but in Parliament it wasn't. Amnesty International already mentioned then that it is a very dangerous law and could be applied to NGOs. They mentioned Greenpeace. It could be, it could be used to lock up Greenpeace activists. But there is actually no, no discussion of the law in the public since your actions. We are now trying to start this discussion, yeah. But there hasn't been really. No, the public is generally with regards to this surveillance thing that ever more increasing surveillance and, 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 and uh, and the uh,
police sort of keeping control of everybody, there's, there's very little um, awareness of this and very little criticism and debate on this. Yeah.